I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in Luke chapter 14. Luke, Luke 14, from verse 15 onwards. Amen. Who didn't bring the Bible can read here on the projection. Luke 14, 15 says the following. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is, the, is he who shall eat bread in the king, kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and set his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready, but they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to get to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and Therefore, I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to the ma to his master. Then the masters of the house, being, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done, and you may command, and still there is room. And he read uh, until 24. My brethren, this month is a month of dedication. It is the month in which the Lord, from the beginning of the Church of Maranatha, He has set aside the month of October so that we may dedicate this month to Him. At the beginning of uh, Maranatha Church, the ones we remember, it was a month where you gave an offering to the Lord. People would bring offerings. They would bring goods, sometimes apartments, properties. Well, people would bring money, whatever they would have the ability to offer and also that the Lord had placed in their heart in one of those services. I don't know if, you, if, you, if any one of you remember of this time. Yes, people would donate cars and properties. They would have a box there in front of the pulpit and people would, in one of those services, they would come and would place in there those offerings. Do the brethren remember this? It was a pew. People, some would give uh, money and others would give jewelry and whatever God would place in their hearts to donate. And one child once didn't have anything to give. She, she entered into the box. Yeah. Imagine this, the experience. And from that point forward, the Lord revealed I don't want any more material goods. What I, what I want is a contrite heart. What I want is a sincere heart. What I want to be offered to me is a life in my presence. And from that day forward, the Lord has given much more. 
the Lord has operated much more in, on the hearts of the ones who are willing and dedicate to Him. And this text has everything to do with what the Lord wants for His church. A short while ago, we brought a message that was inside of this same message, this topic, and it was it had an approach more evangelistical. It was Sunday night? It was the approach was the salvation of souls? But now this text has everything to do with our lives, with the church. We are servants of the Lord, the ones who are living the presence of the Lord, the ones who are living and hearing the signs, the warnings. They have been following everything according to the word and what in the prophecies what happens in the world. And this message is completely geared towards the people of God. And Jesus was here in a house, a house of a Pharisee. A Pharisee was a type of, of a, was a lineage, was a type of, a, was more like, was like, um, I would not say like a political party it was it was not that, but it was a lineage uh, was a group of people that would dedicate they they dedicated their lives to preserve the law. The Pharisees they believed the angels, they believed on the Messiah, but they were number one enemies of Jesus because Jesus preached everything that they never did. They would charge people, but they didn't give testimony of uh, in their lives. And they were always uh, in, in the midst of the crowd that was following Jesus, trying to find a failure on Jesus to accuse him, a moment in which Jesus would say something that they would then uh, the, Jesus would be then uh, um, reproached by them. But now Jesus entered into the house of one of them and he eats with them and they kept observing the, Jesus. And Jesus begins to speak through parables, speaking about the kingdom of heaven, how it would be. He was actually preaching to them, trying to alert them regarding what was going to be the project of God for the life of the people of Israel. And one of them said the following, the verse that we just read, verse 15. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, and he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And this conversation with Jesus brought in him a great desire to imagine how heaven would be. He says, it must be very good to be in heaven eating bread with the, with the Father. And then Jesus then brings him to understand what they had not understood. And Jesus said the following, then, then, so just, just wait a minute, you are, you are speaking about heaven, or, or you speak about sitting at the table or eating on the kingdom of God. However, now Jesus enters, uh, begins telling a new parable, the one that we just read here. Then he said, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and said his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. My brethren, Jesus begins telling this parable, and he says, he speaks in the following way. A man, he prepared a couple of inv inv invitations and he invited a couple of people. He didn't say the time. And the people began to wait for the day in which they would, the, the, the feast was going to take place. Uh, um, a man made an announcement that he was going to uh, have a feast, but he didn't say the hour or the day, and the guests kept waiting. But when everything was ready, the servant, the, the servants of this man 
went out to invite the guests, inform the guests about the time of the party. And Jesus was speaking, was telling this parable to the Jewish people, to the ones who were there. Why that? Because what Jesus wanted to say, what Jesus told to them at that time and wants to tell us today is exactly something regarding of a preparation for men in order to be invited and or in order for men to enter into a feast that has been prepared for a specific group of people. We, Jesus said to them, and now he speaks to us. We also were servants of God. We are the ones who are living a life that we have been invited by God to participate on the banquet that is prepared on eternity. And this banquet is called the marriage of the Lamb. We also don't know the day. Do anybody knows when Jesus will return? No one knows. No one knows the hour or the day, right or wrong. The parable is speaking about what we are. We have been invited. We have been waiting for this day to arrive. We don't know the day, but we know that this day, the Holy Spirit is preparing us to meet with the groom. Now, I imagine people there. Now, let's go back to the parable. They received the invitation. They have been invited for a feast that they didn't know the day. Imagine those people. Every day, they began to live in function of this feast. Surely, they would pass by the house. Then they said, well, I saw someone washing the house. Well, it might be today. Another said, I saw some merchandise went into the house, a couple of boxes. I believe that the food has arrived and I believe that the feast might be today. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get dressed and I'm going to be prepared for the day in which they announce the hour and so that I can take part on this feast. I imagine this parable in this way. People now were living in function of this feast. After all, who doesn't like to be invited for a feast? Everybody likes. You don't like it when you're not invited, right? You get very upset. Oh, man. They invited everyone and was left out. Maybe, maybe next week they will remember me. Right? Every, when everybody is invited for a feast, you make plans for that feast. Surely you buy new clothing, or maybe cut your hair, or do your nails. Men are going to buy a new tail. Men may change their, switch their tires, their ties and shirt, but they remain with the same suit, right? They may polish their shoes, and nobody will notice. But women, no. Every feast has to be a new dress, right? And then the situation, I don't have, I don't have clothing, so I can't go to the feast. Then you open the closet, and you cannot even count. But on the day of that feast, I'm not going because I don't have a dress. And then you, then you go there to the store and try to, you try dress, and then, oh, and you end up buying another dress. Oh, didn't you already buy a dress and already have another one? I said, I didn't like that one. And the man has to wait, has to wait and be patient. Everybody lives in function of a feast, waiting for a feast. But no one, no one knows the day. But what is interesting is that here, when the day was announced, the hour was announced, many people, their majority, was not ready to go to the feast. A few said, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. Ask you to have me excused. And another one, and another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I 
not going to test them. I asked, and another one said, I got married and I cannot go. My brethren, the church of the Lord, we are servants of God. We, the ones who are called uh, Protestants, faithful to the Lord, we need to live our lives waiting for the day of the return of Jesus. We cannot allow the things of this life the commitments that we have in our lives and the needs of this life to take away our focus for this event. We already live in a spirit of, of feast. The Church of the Lord is already celebrating. We are already counting our days towards our lives when we are going to live in heaven. When Jesus began to speak about the parable there, speaking about the parables, speaking about the kingdom of God and all of this, that man, the Pharisee man, his mind and his heart went straight to heaven. You know why? Because that's what happens to us. When we accept Jesus as the Savior of our lives, when we begin to hear the voice of God, the God's mysteries that God has for us an eternal life, that God has for us uh, an eternal dwelling, that God has salvation, Our heart desires to live in heaven. And from that day forward, we begin to live a life that is based and guided by the Holy Spirit. From this moment, from the moment in which Jesus took us out, out of the world, for the moment we have been invited by the Holy Spirit to be part of the church body of Christ, the Holy Spirit began to work in our hearts. And we cannot allow the things of this world to rob this. We cannot allow the things of this life to take away our focus from this. Because salvation is lived where? It's lived here. It begins to be lived here. We cannot allow our hearts, only our hearts to be in heaven. And you might be saying, oh, I'm going to heaven. I ha already received an invitation. I accepted Jesus. Now my passport has a stamp. Now I'm not going to get ready for anything. I'm going to live my life here in the world. I'm going to take care of my own commitments. I'm going to move on with my life like if nothing was happening. And when Jesus finally desire is, is ready to return, he's going to be, f he is going to be required to call me because I already accepted Jesus. Many people live like this. And my brethren, gospel is not like this. A saved life is not like this. Living in Jesus is not this. Living in Jesus is you live in, you live salvation. You know what, it, what salvation is? Let's go. What salvation is? Matthew, what salvation is for you? You see? is to live eternally with God. But salvation is like this here. It must, it must be good to be in heaven. It must be good to be in heaven, living eternally with God. But salvation is not only this. So let's go. Admit what salvation is for you. To live in fellowship. Walk in obedience. You can... You can you can participate, do see. Living a life of obedience, right? A correct life before the Lord. Living according to the Lord has revealed to us every day. Salvation is uh, a fan of words. Salvation is health. Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is peace. Salvation is joy. Salvation is eternal life. Salvation is change of life. Pastor Sab, do you want more? Forgiveness. Salvation is remission of sin. Salvation is fellowship. Salvation is harmony. What else? I heard somebody saying something here. It's to be humble. Salvation is all of this. 
Salvation is happiness. Blessed are those. Right? Is love. My brother and sister, if you are not living this, if you have not been able to reach this, you may find an excuse when Jesus returns. If you are not living the gospel here, if you are not living what the Lord Jesus has promised for us, because the gospel needs to generate in us a change of life. The gospel needs to generate on, on the convert, converted man a change. The gospel needs to generate a transformation, a transformed life. That's what gospel is. That's what salvation is. Salvation is not only you think that you're going to live in heaven, that's it. And God's going to have to take me away, even if I have to grab on somebody's heel. No, that's not it. That's not in this way. We as a church, we have been already invited. We are invited. The signs, remember, the warnings are out there. But also the judgment of God is out there. We have been invited for a feast, and many uh, are not uh, oblivious to this. Many are living a life inside of the gospel without forgiving people. Many are living a life in the gospel without having happiness. Many are living in the, the gospel without having peace. Many are living the gospel, carrying a Bible, singing songs of praise, attending churches without having the security, without being able to sleep at night. You know that many Christians cannot sleep at night. Do you know why? They're not sure of their salvation. And salvation in Jesus in living the gospel, you need to be transformed. Many are living the gospel for 40 years, a, a couple, uh, many 30s, and many for only 10 years, and others 50 years, and others for 80 years. But it doesn't matter. What is important is that during this period in which you are living salvation in Christ, that you may be may enjoy of the benefits of salvation here in this life. Salvation has to, has to be lived here. Do you understand the point that I'm trying to reach here? Salvation needs to cause transformation in us here in this life. The ones who accept Jesus and die a minute later and two minutes later, that's it's no problem with that. They accepted Jesus and they are already in heaven. But us who are here waiting we were waiting for the date of the feast we need to be ready our brethren we cannot um, take the, take that with uh, recklessness recklessly the Lord expect us the Lord expects the salvation to make it to make it change produce a change in us we cannot live for the congregation of the saints. We cannot be in the presence of God. We cannot be here living in fellowship in harmony with the brethren and not be a better person. We need to be better than we were. Salvation generates transformation. Conversion, conversion does that. Now I ask you, are you a better son or a daughter? Are you a better husband? Are you a better wife? You can answer inside of your heart. You don't need to answer out loud. But the gospel needs to produce this in our lives. The gospel needs to generate in us transformation. Otherwise, when Jesus returns, when the Holy Spirit says, the time has come, if you are with your own worldly commitments, if you have your life all messed up, 
my brother and sister, you might have a surprise. Because salvation needs to generate, generate transformation. We need to be different people. Are you a better father? I'm looking at everyone here. I know who you are. I had son and daughter. Are you a better employee today than, than you were in the past? Are you a better employer? Are you a better father-in-law? Are you a better mother-in-law? It is difficult, right? <laughs> Only a miracle. But God can do miracles. Are you a good son-in-law? Are you a better daughter-in-law? Are you a grandma? A better grandma? Right. The, very well. That's our lives. My brethren, we are either waiting for the return of Jesus or we are just waiting, wasting our time here. You know why? Because when the Holy Spirit comes here and says the following, now is time. Then you say the following, hey, wait a minute, but I'm here. I bought a, a piece of ground and I must go and sit. That's what it is. It is the field is the ground of uh, uh, the own commitments and the pleasure of this life. And of course, you need to take care of it, right? Waste your time taking care of it. And you are missing to leave the feast of the Lord is, is preparing for a life because salvation is lived starts here it begins from the moment in which you, you have been invited by God to be here you need to already be celebrating you need to be getting ready it's the Holy Spirit that prepares it's the Holy Spirit that adorns the church the Holy Spirit that changes our hearts and the Holy Spirit that causes us to want eternity but leaving it here in the presence of God doing the services right and the Pharisees they knew that they knew that the Messiah was about to come they knew the letter they knew the Torah they knew the law of Moses they knew but Jesus was there right in front of them and they did not realize that Jesus was the Messiah and that's why Jesus began to tell them this parable. So let's continue. And I thought, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I'm not going to be able to go. The yoke of oxen speaks of what? It uh, speaks about strength. The yoke of oxen. There are two oxen. They're connected by a yoke and they will, oh, they will drag the plow that what they normally use, they use these two oxen to plow the field and to carry um, the production of uh, grain. It speaks of, of work. And many here uh, get involved in work, in losing the blessing of God. They are missing the opportunity of being in the presence of the Lord and in fellowship with God. Many are involved with their work, trying to produce, and they're giving a bad testimony, losing their, te their, their fellowship with God, speaking about A and B, and forgetting what is important, most important, which is salvation. Salvation is not lived only inside of the church. Salvation is lived whatever you might be. And whatever you might be, you need to be ready for this moment. Because Jesus might return at your workplace and if you're giving a bad testimony there then you might say oh I'm busy I'm not going to be able to go Jesus can, can you return returning in two minutes because I'm going to kneel down and place my life before your altar then, then you can return that's not going to, going to happen but no one knows the day or the time but the only, we only know one thing that everything is prepared but the question is, are you prepared for the announcement of the day? You know that is what, is going, what is going to happen. By faith we know. But are you ready to meet with Jesus? Because God is ready. The church is prepared. The church that I say, it's not a Maranatha church. 
is, is the church, the faithful church. There may be just on two. Many, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. But from the moment that you have chosen not to serve the Lord, not to be in fellowship, you see what the father household said. And another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And marriage also can be a, an excuse of many, right? Oh, I'm, I got married. I'm not going to be able to go. There is so much, thing, so many things for me to do. I have to wash the dishes, the laundry, take care of the husband, take care of the food. Of course, we all have our own commitments. We need to take care of those things, right? But as we do this, we cannot allow ourselves not to serve the Lord. This cannot be a, a hindrance for you not to be here celebrating with the Father. This cannot be a hindrance that may prevent you from participating in the banquet with the Father. This cannot be a hindrance to prevent you from doing your part. This cannot be cause you to have a hardened heart so that the Holy Spirit may not be able to testify in you and may, you may be able to take another direction to your life. My brethren, excuses everyone has. Here in the parable, many had an excuse. So now I'm going to ask you one thing. Does it make any sense, those excuses? Does it make any sense that people would just say that, ah, oh, I can't because I need to work, and I can't because I got uh, got married, and I can't because of this and that. If you're waiting for Jesus to return in 30 years, there is a group here that want to get married before Jesus returned, I'm sure of it. So then you get married, Jesus, wait, wait, because I'm not married yet. And then once they get married, they want to leave a honeymoon, no, can you imagine getting married on the night? You get married, Jesus comes now. So then you're going to have go to the honeymoon, then they want to have children, then you have to take pictures of the children, they need to learn how to play soccer, and all those things. Many want to go to heaven, but they don't want it right now. How many people have been waiting here? How many here have been waiting for 30 years? waiting to go to heaven. I am. Yeah, many. For 30 years. 30 years ago, I accepted Jesus. It's been 30 years that I'm waiting for Jesus' return. And there are people here that have been here, waiting here for many more. Brother Anaclet has been waiting, has been a Christian for 60 years. There are people that are waiting for Jesus' return. And Jesus, they want to Jesus' return only in 30 years, 20 years, 15 years. And then it will be all right. So now the question is, are you going to believe the gospel? The gospel? Not this gospel that we see out there, half-baked. Are you ready to live the genuine gospel, the one that Jesus left for us, the one that John saw in Revelations, the gospel that the Lord has for his servants to, to the ones who are going to heaven? Are you willing to live it? according to what God has required of you? That's the question. But many, they have so many excuses. Oh, I can't. I cannot serve the Lord because I'm a difficult person. I cannot forgive. I cannot forget what happened to me. I cannot. It is a bitterness that I have in my heart. I cannot forget it at all. I'm like this. I'm going to die like that. And you're going to die like that. But do you think you're going to heaven like this? You, you may be thinking, oh, it may be great to go to heaven. It must be wonderful. Blessed is, to, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. You might be thinking like that. Going to heaven is wonderful. But now, going to heaven, in order to go to heaven, you need to get ready. You're not just because you are Maranatha, because you have a Bible, uh, a Bible that is the uh, latest version. That doesn't mean anything. Because you know how to sing a couple of songs. So one day God inspired you with a song. That doesn't mean anything. There are many people there 
coming up with excuses. This is this is this is a message for those who are watching on YouTube. There are many people that should be here there at home. They missed the celebration, the feast. They did not participate in on the great feast that the Lord has prepared for us. And in moments like this, that the Lord, my brethren, can give you a blessing, the answer to a prayer. Maybe you are going through a trial and you, have, you don't see a way out. In moments like this, that God can bring uh, healing in the midst of the church. Nobody needs to clap hands or sing or do anything. No, it is in the silence of the heart. And what is important is that two or three is gathered in my name. There I will be. And it is in a moment like this that the Lord is operating. Maybe you are going through a uh, terrible difficulty. And today may be the day of a victory. But many are missing the blessings of God. Many are. I remember one day I, the Lord has given a vision and three angels came to the church and they brought three envelopes and only one envelope was given. Two angels returned with, the, with their envelopes. You know why? Because the people, the target of those envelopes were not in the church. That's what it is. No. So now only God knows when they will receive the answer to their prayers. So then the Lord went there and the servant went there and said, Lord, my servant, my, my master, I proclaimed to everyone, but they said that they couldn't come. So you know what the, the master said? He was outraged and he said to the servant, go out quickly into the streets and lay, lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. Imagine what it is to make a feast and you, you hire a company that is going to make a celebration and you make a you spend with spend money with flour with food forty dollars per people and when it comes the day of the feast where is the people hey amen nobody was able to come it's going to be only us then you I can imagine how angry you would be you can imagine you may prepare a feast and nobody comes so look what he did go go out quickly into the streets and and, and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind any beggar that you see on the street you bring it here can you imagine the place got filled you can imagine you making preparing a feast and you calling all the street dwellers people that are uh, hungry out on the streets going to a feast to eat the place is going to get full right but in the same way that we have chosen not to get ready for the feast not to be in the feast not to enjoy the feast the owner the, the feast the master also has his own right man has free will to choose I go or what I want to do I want to serve the Lord the way I want I'm going to pray the way I want when I want I'm going to go early dawn when I want. I'm going to go to serve when I want. It's, that's all right. Man's free will. If you want to be here or not on the feast that the Lord has prepared for us. But in the same way, the Lord has free will to choose to bless the ones who are being faithful to Him or to choose whoever God wants. The Word says that the, the, the soul that is it's plenty. It steps on the cone of honey, the honeycomb. But the thirsty soul, even to them, even what is bitter is sweet. The soul that has had plenty despises this here. You know that? The soul that has plenty is rejects what is, uh, what is to be in the presence of the Lord. My brethren, when I say here, is, say this here, it's not only to come to the service, but it is to be in fellowship and to live salvation. The soul that has plenty does that. Oh, I'm going to step on on the honeycomb. I don't care. But the whole the one who was who is hungry, the needy, 
Even what is bitter is sweet. Imagine these people dying of hunger, the lame, the blind, they're going to feast. Imagine, imagine these people entering to the house of this man. Imagine what joy was it must have been. And that's what the Lord does. The, there are people there rejecting the advices from the Lord. There are servants of God inside the church rejecting the administration of justice of the Lord. They are rejecting. That's what that's the right word. They are living for tomorrow. Oh, it's good enough. I went to the service this weekend. I already read the Bible. When I miss it again, I'm going to go back to the honeycomb, right? There are people that are like this. But the trial is not going to go away, you know? The trial will remain. The trial will continue. Because you are not in the presence of the Lord. You are not sitting at the table on the house of the master. And then he said to then he said to the servants, going to down the uh, and then ask them to enter until the house is filled because I tell you that none of the ones who are being invited will taste of my my food. And then uh, the servant said, oh, I brought all these people, but I, there is still room. And then the master said, I don't want any one of the ones who have been invited that decided not to come. Go out there and bring more people. The ones who are waiting uh, despising the word of, rejecting the word of God the Bible says that he will show you up the life that is need of the Lord that truly wants the blessing go, runs to the arms of the Lord the life that wants to live the gospel fights to be in fellowship with the Lord so that man said fill this place because none of the ones who have been invited will sit at the table my brethren, that's why we need to be concerned with those things. Many have their own chores. Many, many, most of us, we get tired. Everybody works, but we cannot stop serving the Lord. This cannot be a hindrance. This cannot be a hindrance, hindrance from you to serve the Lord. Don't allow the things of this life to prevent, to take away your focus and your attention. Do not allow. Anyone can have their own excuse. We have so many things that we need to do, the activities of the day, of the day our commitments. Of course, we need to do it. Who wants to watch the soap opera today? <laughs> Who is watching the soap opera today? Which one is the one that is playing on the Brazilian channels? No one is going to say it. But I know there is a group that is watching the soap opera at 8 p.m. Yeah, you, of course, you can continue watching the soap opera at 8 And soccer. Who is watching the, the championship in Brazil? Of course, everyone has their own reasons. They have their own excuses. But my brethren, we need to dedicate our lives to the Lord. Because when the Lord promises blessing, the blessing that is going to be relayed. Now we need to be on the, on the place of the blessing. Otherwise, the blessing is going to go above you and the one who is beside you will be blessed. It's not a word of exhortation. It's not a word of... I'm not saying here... I'm not trying to send a message to anyone specifically. That's not what it is. But we need to leave salvation here in the church especially here and also inside of our homes because here we are family here we are family everyone has their own difficulties we, we all have but we live in fellowship because whatever there is fellowship where is what is whatever there is uh, fellowship with the Lord God is present may the Lord speak to our hearts because the Lord has for us a banquet everything is ready Nothing, none of the prophecies needs to be fulfilled still. All the prophecies about the return of Jesus have already been fulfilled at any moment. The order will be given. What is the order? Maybe 
jointly with the rapture of the church or could be an order of your own individual departure. Oh, don't, it, it doesn't matter. We, you may think that you you will only depart when the, the rapture of the church you might go out any time. We need to take advantage of the fact that we have not be have already been invited. We need to enjoy of the banquet banquets that the Lord has for us. May the Lord bless us. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. The Lord has shown in a vision. The Lord has shown a person that is going through a difficult moment. The vision says the following. I'm going to read it literally. Then we're going to bring the understand. There was a tree that had been cut down. Had been harmed. And everybody that passed by, the tree had been cut down completely. There was only the a piece of the wood there. People that passed by, they, they would say, oh, it's over. This tree is dead. It's, it's completely worthless. But at this moment, you, a voice was heard and this voice would, this voice would say, leave. And at the sound of this voice, this tree would begin to blossom again. 
this piece of tree would begin to blossom again. And that's exactly what we need. Many times we feel like we are in this situation, miserable, without any connection with anyone. It's very difficult. There's no love in our lives anymore. We have no hope. The only thing that is left for us is death. But the gospel is life. Salvation Jesus is life. So you need to live this. You need to allow salvation Jesus to transform your life. You need to allow salvation Jesus to generate in you fruits that will lead you to eternal life. You need to allow the gospel and the Holy Spirit to operate in your heart, giving you a new guarantee of what? That your name is written in the book of life and that you will live this here on earth. The Lord is also speaking about a person. In the vision, the Lord is speaking about a person, but I know that many times we feel like this, but specifically there's a person here that's living like this, living a miserable life, that is being despised. But look, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Leave this situation. You begin to live in Jesus. Begin to enjoy what are the benefits of salvation. All the benefits. They are here at your disposal tonight. We're going to have a word of glorification of the Lord. Lord, we exalt you. Because truly, you touch our hearts. This so great lover. This dedication teaching us how to remain, stand in your presence. Bless be your name, Lord. Because we're every day getting ready to live with you in the heavenly dwellings. Bless be your name, Lord. Because every day your love is being poured out upon our church, which is getting ready, Lord, to be to live with you eternally, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. And we give you thanks for each home here represented, for each life that has been saved here tonight. And for our salvation being decreed in, it, in our hearts, Lord. And for the ones who surely you are to save, our beloved, our relatives, our friends. Lord, blessed be your name for our salvation. Being proclaimed in all the four corners of the earth. We give you glory and hallelujahs, Lord, because we love you, Lord. Because without you, we are nothing, Lord. Blessed be your name for your great love that has been poured out upon lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to praise your name. Because one day, you called us. You took us out of the mud of sin. Take, you took us out of addictions, Lord. You took us out of the defeat and the suffering and the anguish. And you placed us in Jesus. We praise you, Lord, and we ask you that you might give us a blessing tonight and that you may deliver hearts tonight and that you might operate in a way that we may never, so that we might never be caught by surprise, unaware, and that we might never have an excuse, Lord, not to be in your presence. Give us a blessing, Lord, a commitment. Give us a blessing of dedication to you, Lord, and that we may every day, more and more, allow your Holy Spirit to operate and transform our lives. Give us victories, Lord. Give us health. Give us joy. Give us peace so that we may leave us salvation in your presence. Take us home in peace, Lord. Bless the ones who were not able to be in our house or for one wizard or another. In no way, your Holy Spirit may be able to reach them also. And together we may be prepared. Living salvation in Jesus is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender operations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. If anyone desires an assistance, we are here at your disposal. Amen. My brethren, we ask you that you may be praying for the seminar that we're going to have this weekend in the Church of Boston. We have about 300, 1,300 people registered on, in Boston. It's going to be a new record in Boston, 1,300 people. We're praying so that everything works out. The more people in the seminar, it's more difficult. There has never been a seminar this large with this number of people. So ask the brethren to be praying so that everything may, might be a blessing. And to all, the peace of the Lord.